Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, an exclusive interview with the former Commissioner General of the South Sudan National Revenue Authority, Dr. Olympio Atipo, appointed February 2018, fired August 2019. What happened? He tried to do his best and then what happened? He is here to tell us on fixing South Sudan, whether he has fixed South Sudan or South Sudan has fixed them. Welcome to the program. Thank How you, you? Malik. I'm fine. That's so a long time. you were appointed. Your goal was to ramp up the revenue, <coughs> non-oil revenue collections. You did your best. And then what happened? Yes, I was appointed in February by the presidential decree. And then and I was in office on my, in March uh, 2018. And my task is to establish, lead the establishment of the National Revenue Authority to enhance uh, non oil revenue generation because the system is very weak and we, we need to harmonize the system, block the leakages. So basically, that was what I was doing. Uh, the situation before you came in, this was a new institution and South Sudan is over-reliant on oil revenues. This is where the emphasis is being put on non-oil revenue collections. Yes. What were the non-revenues that were being collected and what was the situation before you came in? The, the situation basically before I came is a little bit disorganized uh, and unfunctional. Accountability was disproportionately very weak. So what was there before was that we have two directories. We have custom directories and then the taxation directories. They call it uh, the revenue for the government, the major revenue sources. And there are other ministries and departments which also collect some kind of levies and other uh, uh, revenue for the government. So the formation of the National Revenue Authority is to centralize the revenue collection and then to take the responsibility of revenue collection from all those department ministries into one authority. So by uh, coming into effect of the National Revenue Authority in 2016, the National Revenue Authority became the only legally mandated institution to collect the non oil revenue in the country for the government, apart from the state government institution. Here was a situation where you were trying to bring together institutions that were previously not liaising together. How easy or difficult was that? No, it's a very challenging assignment because, look, whether we like it or not, in any change process at all, there is always a resistance to change. And National Revenue Authority is a very new system to South Sudan, new to everybody. So uh, the challenge we are facing is people find it very difficult to understand what exactly we are talking about. And people also felt, uh, felt very threatened because there was too many leakages in the revenue generation system. And by establishing the National Revenue, the system we are putting in place, the structures we wanted to put in place, is to block those linkages. And, you know, it's going to make... Uh, uh, linkages in a uh, non-oil revenue generation on picking the government money very difficult for people. When you talk about linkages, you are basically speaking in layman terms about money coming in and yes. going out. What, we are trying, what I'm trying to say Not is going that, to government coffers, yeah, but going to The way the money was being generated, accountability is very weak. So a lot of money is going, uh, was going to be post pocket. So if the revenue is not being paid, it's not being paid well, the task payer, the task officers, everybody is condoning and condoning. So government was losing huge revenue as a result of fault, uh, not having a centralized system. 
So the fundamental issue here is centralize the system, monitor the collection system in a very transparent manner, and then make sure that we account for the money. When you came in, how much collections was happening? As a matter of fact, when I came in, there was no data. If you ask them now, they will not provide you any data. How much they have been collecting? Figures have been, but nobody can give you data on the paper that this is the monthly collection we, we have been collecting. Th that is the problem, the challenge of accountability. Because if you want to be accountable, you must be able to have the data to publish. You must be able to have the data to challenge people that this is how much we've been collecting. So when we came into office from 1st January, we have established a system where Every man, we made it accountable. We published the figures that we collect for purposes of accountability. And tell us about uh, the difference that you made in the time that you were at the helm. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we, we started what we call the single treasury account, where all revenues are channeled into one uh, consolidated account. And this is by the National Revenue Authority. It is not by anybody because the National Revenue Authority had mandated the National Revenue Authority to establish collection accounts. And this collection account into which taxpayers pay their money. And one of the key things we want to promote is cashless transaction. We don't want the cash uh, taxpayers to pay money to the custom officers or tax officers. The taxpayers will just go to bank, deposit the money into the government account. And then at the end of the day, we transfer to the... And we have started that process, uh, a new regime, in January this year, 2019. And it was very effective. So every month, we announce the figures. We give record to the government how much we generated and how much we transferred to the central bank for government expenditure. When you first announced the results, what were they? And then let's look at the end of the road. Ever since we started in January, revenue has been progressively increasing. What was it from the very beginning? From the very beginning, for example, the first time we had, we had about 1.2 billion pounds and about $4 million. That was the first, and then it was progressing. There were instances we have almost $10 million and about 1.5 billion pounds a month. So the revenue was progressing because of the sensitization. Now the taxpayers also have confidence in the revenue generation system that they can see where their money is passing through. And especially by announcing the figures, it also boosts the taxpayers' confidence because there is this sort of accountability and transparency that we have entrained in an establishment process of the National Revenue Authority. You speak of resistance to change. Is it something you encountered uh, from the very beginning or right. all through during it's your from, work? It's from the very beginning. And it is normal. I, I don't have a problem because any new system you want to put in place, especially in the context of which we are working, the public of South Sudan, a post-conflict environment where the system of revenue generation are weak, people were benefiting from the government money then all of a sudden you are building a system which is going to prevent people from diverting money into their pocket. You don't expect them to be clapping for you. How was the uh, resistance uh, demonstrated? The resistance demonstration and manifestation is up to where the Revenue Authority eventually has collapsed now, leading to this uh, drama that we are seeing that uh, this mission. Because right from the beginning, when people realize that the, pro the measures that we are putting in place is not friendly into their pocket, then they begin to come out with all manner of uh, stories and allegations. That is where. As a matter of fact, my removal from office started just after three months of my appointment. Can you elaborate on that? What I mean is that when I assume office in March, April, May, from June, then the problem started. People started moving around for my removal from office. And when you talk about moving around, uh, let's talk about the measures that you tried, you put in place. Uh, one of which was the single bank account mm -hmm. and you selected some banks and some of your opponents were saying there was no transparency in how that was done and that uh, you preferred some, you favored some banks as yeah. opposed to the others. It was not true because people were not able to get access probably to take money from the bank to the economy to private the donors. So before we came to office, Ministry of Finance was in charge of the collection. And the Ministry of Finance have signed contract with some of these banks. And there was later on record that the Ministry of Finance wrote to the bank, or, uh, I mean, instructing the Auditor General to investigate the banks for manipulation of the figures, revenue figures, and others. Therefore, if there was no problem with the bank collection and the Ministry of Finance, why would the Ministry ask the Auditor General to investigate the bank? So what we do is that because the National Revenue Authority Act has taken those responsibilities from the Ministry of Finance, 
and we are not supposed to take direct responsibility. We are autonomous institution, and we don't take administrative directive or daily babies from the Ministry of Finance. And that is also another confusion we will come into. So as a result of that, there is a need for us to go in for a new banking selection. So we advertise for banks to apply for the positions. And what, what were the criteria for bank selection? The, the criteria, we set up our own criteria, lo looking at the, the bank, the, 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 the number of areas that is spread in the nation, because looking at the environment we are operating, the, the financial system is very they are remote areas. So we also want the banks which are everywhere. We are also looking at at least the technical uh, aspect of the bank in terms of the, the system that they have because we are looking at the system that we are about to introduce, which must be integrated into the banking system. So we are also looking at the general. And uh, being the South Sudan where we collect more dollars, we are also looking at the certain international dimension of the bank to make the dollar transaction very well. So the bank came and made presentation. So the selection was uh, the selection free and was fair. finally the selection was free and fair. You did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. The selection was free and fair, but because people were not able to get access to the bank, probably to tell them that oh, if you give me this, we are going to uh, you are going to be on our list. They were not happy, because as a matter of fact, I came as a change agent, and as a change agent, I am here not to behave like a Roman, but rather to obey the laws of Rome. So you came and you wanted to institute change and you said the resistance was just too strong. What about the fact that as a foreigner being appointed to such a sensitive position, do you think that made the resistance even more stiff? You know, there are several factors, uh, both external, internal and external factors. One of the funny things about it is that there is something about West Africa. It's a major factor people I don't know. The moment they see West Africa and then it's about money, they are thieves. And there are reasons behind it because of uh, behavior of some people from certain countries in the West Africa, all of us are categorized as thieves. So that is the one factor. If you have anything I say, they say, wow, it's from West Africa. Even senior government officials who just say, ah, that one is from West Africa. And then there is this also uh, xenophobia about being a foreigner. We, we can do it ourselves. So why is this foreigner in that position? Anyway. And then people misunderstood the seat of a commissioner general and my position as an individual. That is also another factor people refuse to understand. So any time I acted, I acted as a commissioner general. I was not acting as uh, Olympio, but they just look at me, is that foreigner? Is doing it? Is that what it's all about or that foreigner? But the fact is that I am trying to protect the seat of the commissioner general because one day I will be going away and somebody has to stay over there. And we need to follow the law. So again, the law, misunderstanding of the law to become a challenge to people because this is a new thing. They don't understand where we have a government institution which is autonomous, which is supposed to do certain things on their own. It's become a, uh, a bigger issue. So people turn themselves to a pocket lawyers, want to be interpreting the National Revenue Authority Act according to how it suits them, and that's become another challenge. Let's actually dive into to the elephant in the room, yeah. the fact that you were suspended or even terminated, your contract was terminated without any investigation. The investigation was done later on and there were many accusations against you, one of which was that you had opened a private account in Mombasa operated by yourself, that you violated the laws of uh, public uh, accountability, Amazing. management, and so on and so forth. And then you were uh, under investigation only later on, but that you were terminated before being investigated. How did you receive that news? And remember, you were appointed by the president and dismissed by the Minister of Finance. Well, those are the, you see, it's a very interesting, uh, it undermined the integrity of the country and it is, it's also a bad image to the government because I am here to read any portion of the South Sudan constitution. We say when the president issue a decree to appoint somebody, a minister has the power to overturn the presidential decree. As, as at now, the presidential decree has not been removed, it has not been revoked, it's still standing. So uh, we will see what happens. What happened is strange for somebody to be appoint me to be terminated before investigation is instituted. Because what is the purpose of terminating the appointment? What conclusion did you reach to terminate the appointment before you, uh, you investigate it? Now they finish the investigation. All the allegations that have opened a bank account 
in your Mubasa. I am operating my private bank account. It's very strange because I don't blame people because I've realized that a lot of capacity gap has also contributed to this. For instance, the National Revenue Authority Act has mandated the board of directors to take certain action. And this bank account they are talking about, this is a government account. As a commissioner general, I acted on behalf of the National Revenue Authority upon the resolution of the board to work. And we opened a, a bank account in the various bank in the name of government. This is National Revenue Authority bank account. And monies have been transferred from this account for eight months to the Ministry of Finance. They have not complained. They did not reject the monies. Then you turn around after eight months and say, I have opened my private account. And when you go, they went around, they did not see Olympio's account. The account that they are talking about, the government account that they have been receiving money from. You see, there is, it, this is what a challenge is. You were also accused of mismanaging the 2%. And the 2% is the money that is deducted after you have transferred uh, much of the collections to the Ministry of how Finance you, account. How do you accuse somebody for mismanagement if you don't carry on audit? Do you just sit in your office and assume that somebody is mismanaging money? That is a very strange thing. And everything is done as if there are no rules, there are no laws, everybody as if we are in the kangaroo jungle somewhere, everybody is just running around. What is all this 2% about? National Revenue Authority Act has given 2% retention to the authority for establishment and capacity building within the transitional period of four years. And it, you did that? You were and, using the yes, money? Yes, and the 2%, we started deducting the 2% from uh, January. And let me tell you, from January to uh, August, as at the time I left office, the total amount of 2% we have as, as a revenue today was just about $880,000. And that $880,000, that is what I was virtually using for operation. Because the Ministry of Finance refused to give me operation because that's a part of frustration to frustrate me not to work. They have not been giving operation. Even by the, by the time I left office, four months operation, four months of operation cost was in area. Yet I've collected over four billion and close to nine million. We did that four months for the Ministry of Finance. They did not ask me where did you get money to run the organization for four months with that operation cost before collecting that money. So that money was used for institutional of purposes. course if you want to get a fish from the river you don't uh, throw an empty hook into the river you have to add the meat to the hook and throw to the river the other we use money to generate money the other accusation that is leveled against you is that you distributed the vehicles for the institution to your friends it is another ridiculous accusation and these are the challenges that after the investigation they found nothing there was nothing of that nature these are vehicles that we brought, and these are operational vehicles. We have only two uh, uh, directories. That is the, 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 the custom division and taxation division. And being somebody who has been in the business, knowing the dynamics of what is happening here, I know where to put my resources to get money. I know where to put my resources, and I know where there are risk factors that I must take measures to control. Custom division is a high risk factor in this country which need to be controlled and controlled well. So whatever I do to control situation over there to increase the revenue over there, people don't know. I don't sleep because I need to find a ways of making sure that I control the leakages in those areas to generate revenue for the government. But it is easy to sit down and drink tea and come out with all manner of allegations. I, I miss a lot about what you are saying. Are you saying that you did not distribute the vehicles to some people or are you saying it's your prerogative to do so? And how have you distributed? The vehicles were distributed for official use to collect money. I don't even know. They should bring out. They were not able to come out. It was just people who were running their mouth around. The vehicles were distributed to the officers of custom and for them to generate money. And as a commissioner general, and one of the noise they make so much that the, the board chairman was giving a vehicle. Who told them that the board chairman should not be giving a vehicle? Let's just be very serious. More precisely, that you had bribed the board. That is the issue. It is easy for anybody to run their mouth, ram. Which money do I use to bribe the, the board? Where would I get the money to bribe the board? From where? The, you see, the board of directors, have, these are the people that I respected so much. They have an integrity to protect. Now the report is out. All the allegations that they've said, they couldn't find any of the allegations. And let's talk about the report. Uh, they, they, 
the, the conclusion that is out there is that you are free to stay or travel in light of the evidence that was presented, but that is saying very little. What, what did you glean from that? Yeah, the report now uh, is a challenge. Uh, they, they have not given me a copy of the report. They should have given me a copy of the report. So we are still asking for. I'm still asking for a copy of the report to, because you. Uh, this is an investigation report, and this report, this investigation committee was constituted at the South Sudan Investigation Act 2006, and that document can be tendered in the Court of Competent Jurisdiction. So it is not a joke. This is just the beginning of the matter. So now the investigation is exonerated me and the board from wrongdoing. The question we should be asking is, why was my contract terminated? Right, that's a good question. But uh, do you feel that after all the allegations that have been said against you, you have been vindicated? And does that confirm uh, what you were saying, your suspicion all along that this is just part of the resistance? Of course, yes. We have been vindicated. Not me alone. The board in general, we have been vindicated. We were just trying to protect the government revenue. We were just trying to make sure that we create an environment for government to generate more resources in a transparent manner for uh, development services. But the people don't want that to happen. Certain people don't want that to happen. So we have been investigated. You hold on to that thought and let's take a break from you. Are you looking for a quality media company in South Sudan? Have you heard of Doku Media? Well, look no further. At Doku Media, we fix any event for you. We provide top general video coverage for you using our state-of-art equipment, including our unique digital video mixer and the crane tripod. Would you like quality photography? We can fix it for you. Would you love to have a first-class wedding? We can also do it for you at an affordable price. Oh, would you like to laugh? We can also make you do that. Contact us now on 0920 007 or visit our office located within Peace Hospital in Juba to receive our quality digital technology service. Local media, we fix the nation. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingoth and with us is former Commissioner General of South Sudan National Revenue Authority, Dr. Olympio Atipo. Has he fixed South Sudan or has South Sudan fixed them? You answered the question. Talking about the fact that you were generating revenues and you have argued revenues increase during your time and then you were sacked and you are saying to give way to corruption. Is that what you are saying publicly? Basically, where was I sacked? If we are trying to protect government revenue, we are trying to stop people from stealing government revenue. We are trying to make sure that there is enough money for government to run and people don't want the Why are they fighting against? They are not fighting against me. They are fighting against the government. They don't want the government to succeed. Because every government needs revenue to succeed, especially in South Sudan, in the context in which we are working. Domestic revenue is a key area that we cannot do away with. So why are people fighting this system? When you talk about vindication, is it the fact that you have been found innocent or is it the fact that you feel that there's no much uh, progress has happened since your sacking? No, for, the, for even since I said what have they done, they have not done anything to improve revenue collection. Go to their record how much they have generated and you see what has happened. I challenge them, the Ministry of Finance, to institute audit investigation into the four months that I'm not in office. Revenue were transferred wrongly in, a, in, in contravention of the public financial management and accountability. And for the first time in history, National Revenue Authority was diverting revenue from the collection account to the operation account, not into the uh, Ministry of Finance account, which is against the public account, uh, financial management and accountability act. And then the National Revenue Authority, uh, this is exactly where people were fighting against me. Was it different during your time? It was different because the law does not allow that. And as a commissioner general, when I was there, I can never allow anybody to divert revenue from the collection account to operation account. It's only 2% that's supposed to go to the operation account. And then the, our normal operation comes from the Ministry of Finance. But yeah. nobody is talking about that. You indicated that uh, what is facing you is a legal case. Your contract has been terminated. And then the results have come in. You have been found to be innocent. Yeah. The, the minister, in his letter, is saying, you can stay or you can go. Are you saying you also want to challenge? 
no, the, the, the issue is simple. There is a very, it's a very complex situation we are having. People thought it's just a, a something which is going to go away. It's not going away now because first the contract was terminated wrongly. If you look at the contract I signed with the Republic of uh, South Sudan, it's an international contract which has certain terms and conditions. There are dispute resolution articles and there are all these things. So all those things have been violated. Nobody even look at that. Secondly, why am I still having the presidential decree appointing me has not been revoked? That is true. And thirdly, because the contract was terminated wrongly, based on an allegation which, are, which were unfounded, and now you came up with the investigation report, it's generating me from the allegation upon which my contract was terminated. What are your options? There are three options on the table of government. I, 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 the government will decide what to do. It is the option they take that will trigger our response. The option that has been taken is that you can stay or you can go. And that is Which not one a, are you going to take? No, this is not an option. This option is just a, like a, a lifting of travel restriction. So now I can travel to wherever. Decision has not been taken yet on that report. Until the decision is taken on that report, then it will trigger our response. What other decision is, is you need to be taken? Take it's either you stay or you go or you challenge uh, the results. What are you going to do? There is no result to challenge. The, the, the investigation committee report has exonerated me. So it is up to government to take a decision on that report. That is what we are waiting for. I will travel. I will travel and go and relax somewhere. But until government take and there will be a, a time frame we expect government to take decision on the report. And what kind of decision do you expect from the government? No, the government has uh, options on their table. They know what to do. And if they, the government doesn't take any options, uh, what are you going to do personally? There is option. There are only three options. Whatever happens, government will take one. Is one of the options you challenging uh, the termination, the wrong termination of your contract? If that is part of the contract, a contractual agreement is there in the contract. If you wrongly terminate and this, there are legal issues. But that is not. Uh, the option, of course, it is a part of the option. Any of the party has a, a right to pursue a legal action at any point in time. It is there in the contract that we sign. They, they are reading it. But for me, I am not the one who should take decision on the report. These are things which has happened. People rush and use their emotion to do the mistake have been made. They need to be corrected. So when government take action on the report, finally, then all of us will know exactly which direction we will move to. What do you consider to be the government? The Minister of Finance has issued that uh, report to the media and is vague. So when you talk about government, I'm, is it from I'm, the ministry or is it from the I'm president mean, himself? Yes, I'm talking about the president himself. It's not the minister who appointed me. Under normal circumstances, in any country or in any international bird practice, what they should have done if they, they are sure on the, the allegation, is to suspend the Commissioner General. Ask the Commissioner General to step aside, they investigate. And then the report will come out to others say, oh yes, we have found this, then you can be fired or we have exonerated you. But they just wake up from nowhere and believe that what they think in their mind is correct. Because that is a confusion uh, about the revenue authority. People don't understand what we are doing and people refuse to learn. And I always say that if you don't want to learn through the right way, you will learn by accident. Now that you have been found to be innocent, if you were reinstated by the president, would you take it? Well, uh, that... It's a yes or no question. <laughs> well, of course I am here. If the president feels that what he has done is not correct, and he thinks that my services is still needed to support him to achieve his aim of modernizing the revenue, I will not deny I will go back to office. And what if he says... To the contrary. If it says to the contrary to I'll go. You will go and that is the decision you were waiting for. No, it's not a decision. I will still travel in a few days now, not be as soon. I have to go and rest somewhere. I will be waiting for the, any of the decision to come at any time. Whether to stay or to finally depart from South Sudan Revenue Authority. Then we can decide what to do. In this program we speak of fixing South Sudan. How easy or difficult was it to fix South Sudan? Fixing South Sudan is not a joke. Even my own president, His Excellency General Salva K. Maidi, I don't think he's sleeping. Because it is not a joke to fix South Sudan. But then, what we realize is that it is just about determination. 
making sure that you are very transparent is whatever you do. Uh, no matter what people say, if you are transparent, the evidence is there. The truth will always come out. Because the truth is like a cork. You cannot push it under the water. You leave it, it will pump up. It has not been uh, easy for you personally because you have not been able to travel to see your family. And how, what did you make of that process? Did you feel that you were under detention, literally? No, because, no, I feel that I was, I was restricted not to travel outside the country because I'm under investigation without any support anyway. It's very frustrating uh, to stay in the house where allegations are flying and all this. It was very, very frustrating. Frustrated, but what can I do? It is occupational hazard uh, because uh, this is what's supposed to happen and it has happened. But what is important is that in the midst of all these lies, all this fabrication, the concocted, all these things, the truth is not out. So people like you and the journalist should be asking questions. What exactly was the motivation for my contract to be terminated? What was the motivation? These are the questions that we should interrogate. Why are people fighting against government system? A system which can make government physical policy in a very transparent manner. A system which can give uh, financial security to government. Why are they fighting? What I realized was that any good system that His Excellency the President wants to put in place, you find his own people frustrating it. That did, is very strange. Did you underestimate the capacity of the people who, who don't want change to fight back and to disarm you as they, as they have done? Was that something that was uh, no, uh, I didn't, unexpected? No, I knew. I told you that my removal of office started three months just after three months, a lot of things have just after three months. So it has even taken almost about 15 months before they go to this. So a lot of things have been done. They fail from here, they do plan B, they fail, they do plan C, they fail. So they've been running around with all these plans before they go to that. So it's not something which surprises me anyway. It's something I knew it would come in, but as for when it would come. So it was not a surprise. But the fact is that they have done actually nothing. They have not achieved anything. What they have done virtually is to promote my career ac across the globe. That I've managed the National Revenue Authority successfully for the three months. I changed the collection pattern. We instituted certain transparency measures and all the lies that they've said have stolen money, have done that. Now, all of them are lies and they couldn't find anything. That shows. And as a matter of fact, I appreciate some of the people, the individual who did all this thing. I understand because uh, the system here is that the moment people have government money, it is automatic that they behave as if it's their own. They have to take it home. So people still don't believe why I did not steal. Because it's like you have opportunity to steal government money. So the crime I have committed is that why didn't you steal the money? It took some measures for you, for your removal to be expedited. Do you regret some of the decisions you made while at the helm of Revenue Authority? No. I've, I've, is there something you wish you had done differently? If there is something I wish I had done differently, it's things that I'm going to tighten more. In fact, I, some of the people around me would have been removed. That is one of the mistakes I think that we have made as a board in this thing. It's because of the existence and the mistake they made that maybe probably they will change their attitude, they will change their behavior. That has caused the whole nation this embarrassment. That has caused the whole nation this embarrassment. Because this sector is a sector where if you are not firm, government cannot get the revenue. And when you talk about uh, being firm, uh, you were literally threatened by some people. Of course. These are normal things we suppose. Can to you know. explain that? No, for the threat is coming to there are people who walk to my office and told me point blank that uh, you we are going to do this for you, we expose you, we do. And there are rumors of uh, we, we, we will attack you and all those things. But and then you relent and give them money? No. I don't give people money because they threaten me. And that is why even they work. Because they realize that there is nothing they can do for me to give them money. And they realize that what we are doing, it is just going to block them. And we have a system in place. If we are to allow it for the next three years, taking government money will be very expensive for everybody. Because the system is going to be too tight. What is one thing that happened to you that you want the people to know about, what would you tell the people who are out there and willing to fix us today? Yeah, for me, uh, the, for the first time, I've seen this consciousness movement 
and then the appreciation of South Sudan that they want to change, especially in the transparency area. Especially if you look at there are certain significant things that has happened within this period. One is that when the board reacted, the press statement that the board issued was very significant because nobody was expecting that to happen. But the board was very emphatic. And some of the revelation in the press statement even surprises me, shocked me. I never knew that people were putting pressure on the board for a long time to sack me. A lot of things has happened. And people even confess. Uh, for example, my, my deputy confessed to them that he was the one who led certain crusade, uh, when, especially when they come to the recruitment. You know, recruitment was a very significant issue, which also generated this. Because the law said that we should do recruitment by advertising opposition. And to be, as a matter of fact, if you look at some of the people who are working in taxation and other areas, they don't have qualifications. But they are just there for over the years. But looking at the system we are creating and the opportunity we are creating, we need to screen people through this advert to pull them at appropriate places. Because the salaries are going to be different. The benefits are going to be different. We cannot promote people wholesale like that. It is never done anywhere. And that also is another agitation. People are scared because they know they cannot compete. So they are passing through the back door to get to where they want to do, and they wanted to do. And this is one of the things. You remember we have started the recruitment. And we actually selected five commissioners. And that recruitment also was part of your removal because people said you recruited people who were very close to you and that you married some of the, yeah. you know. Thank you very much. Uh, my dear, what surprises me about this country is that people have gone to school, have certificates, but they behave as if... They, they are selling tomatoes and other things in the Konyo Konyo market. It's very unfortunate because uh, with that, because these are the people who are supposed to take policy decisions for the country. But if they are talking like that, for example, Ministry of Finance has an agreement with African Development Bank on the issues of establishment. And one of the key issues they agree with the bank is that they will bring an external company or firm to do the change management process, including the recruitment. And Ministry of Finance advertised the position and hired the firm for me. But they turned around to tell people that I brought my own private firm. The firm that they hired for me. And then the firm came and make a, made a presentation to the board of directors. And the board approved the criteria and everything. And to the extent that the board agreed that at any particular interview period, one member of the HR committee of the board must be present as an observer just to see what was happening. You did all the due diligence, but people still suspected that you colluded with some of the companies. Now, this is what, this is Regardless it. of the Rega truth. We did all this thing, but the people, because when the people want to fabricate a narrative, that is how it is. It's a narrative that they want people to believe. For example, the five people that we have selected, the five people, they say they are all Zandis, because of uh, uh, my wife, it was in the, uh, the board statement. I have a wife from Zandi, so I selected Zandi. Today, I want to be emphatically say that out of the five, three are Dinkas, 100% fully blooded Dinkas. And I have to say it. And then one is a woman. And that woman married a Dinka. The, wife, the husband is from Ubebe. So, by your culture, basically, she's a Dinka. So, four. And they were all qualified. They are all qualified. These are qualified people who pass through the examination and pass through the interview. It's only one equatorian. Are you a hero or a villain? Well, the, the public will know whether I am a hero or not. I have done my part. I am just a messenger. A messenger who has no cross in his hand. A messenger who is not here to discriminate against anybody. I have played my part. But I am on a mission. It is not yet over. Has South Sudan fixed you? No. I started fixing South Sudan. That is where people are running and then away. And they fix you? No, the South Sudan did not fix me. Either way, I will not be sitting here talking South to you. South Sudanese have fixed you? No, they have not fixed me. It is because I began to fix them that is when they start running away. You are going to fight until you get justice. No, for... Even if it means going to court. No, the point is that, yeah, we have a legal options in the contract. But for now, as I say, decision has not been taken on that committee report, to the best of my knowledge. So we wait for the government to take a final decision on that uh, report. Then from there, we can... Because look, people need to clear their name. Reputation is not something you buy from the market. It took hard work and energy over the year to build your reputation and credibility. 
only for some reckless individuals to just decide that we want to just pull your name and do things and go, no. You mentioned the African Development Bank. Your contract was signed with the African Development Bank, which was giving the loan for the establishment of the institution. Are you going to raise this issue with them? As a matter of fact, I'm not an employee of African Development Bank. I don't even have a contract with African Development Bank. That is what people don't know. I have a contract, international contract with government. Whatever African Development Bank do is between the government and African Development Bank. But they kept quiet. Of course, I don't have anything to do with them. That is the bank. Maybe there's the bank policy that when they are investing money somewhere, there is a problem. They have to keep quiet. They've never spoken to me. So because I don't have a contract with them, so I don't even want to talk about it. But at the right time, we will talk about the role certain individual in African Development Bank play to undermine the government institution to get to where we are. What did they do? At the right time, we'll talk about that. Now is the right time. <laughs> My name. Dr. Olympia. Our story is going to be told. Thanks for coming to Fixing <laughs> South.